What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Auto. Yo. We are going to be watching the Wednesday night league tournament here at Full Grip Games. Excited to commentate over this. Our players are getting geared up and ready for the Collinsville Regional Championships. Many of them are going to be attending, as well as Otto and myself. Very excited, very excited. Our yeah. first standard regional in a while, right? I know. I haven't played standard since, uh, I guess, Philly. Philly, right. It's been a while. And Vicare is not really a deck on anyone's radar anymore. So. I know. Otto, are you sad that you can't really, in good conscience, play a dragon deck right now? Uh, yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a big bummer. I've tried, I tried out... Uh, be like different ray variants and they just all fell short for me so <laughs> we got mr marco in the chat saying otto's arms look bigger every time i see him wow thank you very much <laughs> uh we've got zach pra here on the right versus brady botner i know brady has got a jirachi zapdos ultra beast deck on the left and zach pra he's got ultra and a Krasma. Otto, what are your thoughts on this matchup here? I mean, Ultra Necrozma ultimately fell short at OCIC, and the big reason for that was the Zapdos is just pretty good at picking off attackers in that matchup. Like, a lot of Ultra Necrozma players say that they can kind of, you know, use Giratina to ping different bench uh, Pokemon, like the Jirachi, and set up the Sky Scorching Light. But in theory, or in, in practice, it's actually harder to pull off, so... It is, and then a lot of players are playing that Absol as well, exactly. which can be really bad for uh, Ultra and Necrozma, which really just has just enough energy usually to get by turn after turn after you're done retreating and so on and so forth. That, uh, that Absol's ability there can really get in the way of a smooth uh, performance on the Ultra Necrozma side. Right. I mean, theoretically, you you know don't play any GXs. You keep Giratina and you just cycle it over and over again. But Zapdos can escape rope your Malamars. They can get Guzmas off on on Inkays early in the game. It's it's pretty hard actually. So. Now something that the Ultra Necrozma player can pull off if they are able to is uh, if Brady benches maybe too many Jirachis on his side of the board he will have to look out for the potential Giratina distortion door with Ultra Necrozma Sky Scorching Light play. Right, yeah. That's like the end game play for Ultra Necrozma so we'll be we'll have to tune in to see if he can you know get all the plays going well enough to do that. And we've got a huge turnout here for our weekly Wednesday night tournament. 14 players in attendance, all getting ready for the Collinsville Regional Championship. So I'm excited about this. Should be a four-round event here. Oh, awesome. Lots of content to keep us busy. So hopefully you guys are as, uh, as excited as I am to get this underway. So uh, what do you think about... Ooh. Looks like we're getting started, so let's get right on <laughs> oh, to it. Oh, see, and that's just the, the roughest start here. You don't want to play any GX attackers early in the game, so. No. This I'm is... sure Brady's loving this start from Zach. Exactly. Brady's got a Blitzel there in the active position, and a Zapdos on the bench will play Nest Ball and search his deck for, I would assume, a Jirachi. Yep, yep, definitely. And the Blitzel, really cool addition here. His list is very similar to Robin Schultz version that we saw finish 10th place at the Oceana International Championships. But I would say, you know, you hate to say it, but I feel like starting Ultra Necrozma in this matchup is almost an auto-lose scenario. It's really not good. Like, you kind of have to hope the Zapdos can't Guzma the Ultra Necrozma once you get it out of active. And you right. have to hope that that's the Ultra Necrozma that you Sky Scorching Light with at some point, too. Yes. So. So you hope that the Ultra Necrozma somehow is able to sit safely on the bench the entire match. But we know that uh, Brady is uh, we know that Brady is playing Shrine of Punishment, and there it is. So that is going to tick away at that Ultra Necrozma's hit points throughout the course of the game. Yeah, and I've heard. You know, talk of people wanting to tech an Acerola in Malamar just for the mirror matchup. So, I mean, maybe Zach has a way to get this, you know, off the bench or off the field. So True. We'll see. And thank you so much, Natalie, for those bits. Hit the thousand bits badge. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, Natalie. 
I know she's been farming the free bits. So Zach just has to, wow. Oh, man. Oh, man. What a bummer. Uh, oh, his hand is showing the camera. That hand is bad. Uh, looks like, uh, I thought he passed. He didn't oh, just yeah, pass. Yeah, yeah. No, That's what I was thinking, too. Brady forgot to flip for the sleep. That Got happens it. all the time. Yeah, Zach just had to play down those cards just so he could Lily for two. It's, it's a huge feels bad. Oh, definitely it feels bad, but he's got a couple copies of Ultra Ball in his hand, I see. And he had a switch, too, so he will be able to get this guy out of the active. And there is a Jirachi in that hand as well. I just saw him pick those up from Full Grip, so I assume he's playing two Jirachi in this list, just like the ninth place list that I was looking at earlier today. Oh, from he Ultra Ball it away. Hmm, doesn't need it. I guess not. Guess not. Interesting choice there. Oh, Zach has a rescue stretcher in his oh, hand. Oh, he does. That's, He's that's just true. doing the roundabout. Okay. Ultra All right. ball the Pokemon away, <laughs> then use the rescue stretcher when really you could you could save just, that for later, but it's you know it's Or fine. you could just Ultra Ball away the rescue stretcher. Yes. It's the same thing. Yeah, that's true. That is <laughs> but true. But sometimes it feels better. <laughs> to Ultra Ball away the Pokemon, then you get to use your Rescue Stretcher, right? You feel like you're playing more cards that way. You do feel like you're playing more cards that way. So that is uh, very interesting. I knew a lot of players were hyping Ultra yeah, there and Necrozma. It is. You're, you're absolutely right. Oh, I already knew it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of players were hyping the Ultra Necrozma as just the go-to deck for Oceana. And Collinsville, too. And Collinsville. There were people saying it was going to be the most played deck. For sure. Oh, thank you so much, Jordan Appleyard, for the sub, that Twitch Prime sub. Appreciate you. Welcome aboard. Please enjoy your new emotes that you now have access to, including the very popular new Woo Poggers. Okay, Woo Poggers emote. Welcome to the club. Thank you. So. When are we getting the Wigglytuff? Oh, uh, the Wigglytuff emote. Do you like the Wigglytuff? I think it's I cool. I thought the Wigglytuff was pretty cool. All right. I, I also like the Wigglytuff emote, so might be looking at that as an advancement here going forward. So welcome aboard there, Jordan. Looks like Zach is going to be able to Jirachi here, get another uh, Inke into play. And it does appear as if Zach is potentially using that ninth place list from Oceana. It looks pretty similar from what I've seen so far. The Nest Balls, uh, the two Jirachis. And uh, yeah, that list I did see was kind of light on supporters. That yep. Mm -hmm. my one criticism of that list. I mean, that's what people do when they put Jirachi in their deck is they go first to cut the supporter count, right? And then, you know, if you get mucked or you can't get your Jirachis out, it just feels really bad sometimes, you it know? It does feel really bad, though. Jirachi is just such a good card. I'm not sure how I feel about just outright cutting draw supporters. Fair though. enough, yeah. Right? I feel like eight feels like a you know minimum for a lot of decks that I know we're moving closer to like six now. <laughs> I mean you had that revelation the other day when we were testing. You said that once you added back some draw supporters and Zapdos, it felt really good. It right? did feel really good, yes. Right, because you can continue to draw and play the game even when your opponent gets muck out. But like the DDG idea was that you just have everything turn one, you just draw everything off the lily to win the whole game there. So you <laughs> I know I guess that's true, right? <laughs> uh looks like Brady will go in with a turn two, Cynthia, he's got the Jirachi in the active position. He already has everything he needs to knock out Zach's Jirachi, which is not going to be doing him much in the way of finding supporters when it hits the discard pile. Absolutely. So this is a strong start here from Brady. Absolutely everything that you want on a turn two. And when Zapdos gets to go first, it really gets to tee off and, and stabilize its board position even more. There's a lot of pressure from the Zapdos side to take a prize on the first turn if it's going second. Yeah, I mean, we were talking about this other day, where like whether it's good to go first or second. Right. And at least in some matchups, you know, you could if you're going second, you could get the Guzma off, but then you're setting up your board way less. Right, I so agree. being able to go first, since you can't attack anyways, you might as well set up your board and then next turn go for the, the KOs. Absolutely. Zapdos wants to go first versus almost everything. The mirror, mirror is though, just right. extremely sketchy, and I'm not exactly <laughs> sure what the best route is. you got to hope you have Guzma and then go second, right? Though I think if we really broke down the numbers, I would say I'm probably winning 60 
sixty percent or seventy percent of the mirrors where I go second, and mm-hmm. those those numbers just don't really lie, you know. Right. Even if, if it's sixty percent, you're like. It's still that's still worth it, yeah. It's still worth it, right? Because it if you trust the deck, feels good, yeah. If you trust the deck to get your Guzmas, then you just you go second and you can take right. a KO. I know. You can escape rope too, so it's like. You do just have those bummer hands where it just doesn't buff out. Zach is going to promote the Inke here, and uses Cynthia to draw a fresh new hand. It looks like he may have to go up and take this knockout with an Ultra Necrozma. That feels so bad because he has to attach two energies. Oh, it's horrible, right? I actually don't think he has a... Oh, he does have the switch in his hand. But, like, he has to discard two psychics to I kill know. Zapdos. To do I ten know. more damage. That's like, oh, that just doesn't feel good at all. Ultra Necrozma coming into the active there. Gonna Photon Geyser for a knockout and take a single prize. But Zach has that GX Pokemon in the active position while Brady just has a Zapdos laying in wait with Choice Band ready to go. That Ultra Necrozma is taking damage every single turn here from that Shrine of Punishment as well. And you gotta be worried if you're Zach here that the Ultra Necrozma might not survive the turn. Yeah, I mean, what at the end of the turn, he's gonna be having 140. So Brady needs, what, just an Electra Power to take that knockout? 110. If he does 140... Oh, he needs yes. two Electra Powers, technically, Just right? one with the Shrine. Because he'll do 140 with the Choice Band and Electro Power. There's 40 damage on it already. Oh, it's right. 180. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Plus then let's 10. try and do the 10. Yep. See ya. Yep. See ya. So that is a very doable turn here from Brady. It looks like he's going to grab a Nest Ball, and he's already used Stellar Wish. This deck will sometimes miss energy though i will say that a lot of these lists are not playing volkner anymore my early zapdos lists had a ton of volkner in them now i've moved down to one maybe zero right i mean and robin's list plays one what? it plays one volkner but it does play more energy than ddg right ddg has eight lightning versus robin's with a five plays 10 energy all together all together but the beast the doesn't count beast doesn't zapdos, count yeah so. Looks like Brady is just going to go ahead and use that Tapu Koko Prism Star to make sure he's got the energy to attack this turn. So that's a great play. A very cool way to make sure that you get energy off of a searchable card with Jirachi. You could get energy with an S-Ball, basically. Yep. And so we see Brady counting up the numbers. He knows he's got it. He's he got ahead. it like that. Easy pickings here. Zapta swinging in for 140 damage. That Ultra Necrozma is toast. And thank you so much, Degenerate008, for the Twitch Prime sub. Appreciate it. Welcome to the club. Please enjoy your new emotes, especially the new Woop Hoggers. All right? Woop Hoggers, everybody. You should call it their Busted. gym membership when they, oh, when your they gym? subscribe. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for your gym membership. Enjoy your gym membership. For renewing your gym membership. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you for renewing your gym membership, Degenerate. Then nice. I'd have two gym memberships. Ah, uh, so funny, right? Obviously, Otto's got a gym membership. You guys seen his arms lately? Looking swole. All right. Zach just has to Cynthia again. With an Inke active and two Malamars on the bench. It's not the worst because, like, if he can get the Giratina and he can switch in an active, he can start, you know, taking prizes. For sure. He's not in a horrible spot as far as being able to respond to the Zapdos, but you know, Brady's hand is huge. His hand's yeah. gigantic. <laughs> uh, there's, and at this point, I don't think Zach is going to be let loosing or anything like that. I'm pretty sure that this list that we've seen doesn't really play let loose Marshadow either. So that's not an option for him. It looks like he's just going to get stalled out and has to pass. He doesn't even get to Hypnosis. Yeah, because without the Switch card, he can't even Ultra Ball for the Giratina. No. Because he'll have to retreat the active, and then he can't power up the Giratina. So. Exactly. So Brady, you see there, just has this gigantic hand. He's oh, going to escape rope. rope. So good. You know that, oh, and Zach doesn't even offer up a Malamar, which would be harder for a Zapdos to knock out. Right. He just gives him the free knockout in Inke. I mean, he's got to be thinking, you know, Brady's got three Electra Power still left in deck, so... Oh, yeah, right. And he's going to Stellar Wish, too, so... 
it feels horrible uh, being Very. a Malamar player. And Zach asked me, I'm not going to lie, Zach asked me before the tournament here tonight, he's like, Mahone, I need your honest answer. Is Malamar a playable deck for this weekend at Collinsville? I was like, yeah, man. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> it's playable. You might just have a bad time versus some Zapdos decks. Like, that just might happen. Like, I can't. You know, promise you that it's going to go any better than uh, what we see going on right here, though. Uh, I also was reassured playing against Riley last night that every deck can uh, can have a bad time like this. It's oh, not, yes. It's yeah. not Even just decks Malamar. Even completely teched for the matchup, too. Yes. can feel bad. Exactly. I beat Riley in a game last night when he was playing Zoro Rock, and he started Rock Rough and then did the turn one corner, and I switched and knocked it out, and that was it. He got benched, okay? He just lost. And then I played him in another game where he didn't see a DCE for three or four turns, okay? So every single deck could do this. I've also started games with Zapdos, where I start Zapdos, Cynthia, and no bench Pokemon. We're like, all right, that's great. Go ahead, right? <laughs> so every deck does this. I'm just giving Malamar a hard time right now. And Riley is in the chat. <laughs> Turn one corner, Monka. Monka S. <laughs> Zach just has an escape board for that Inke. He needs to find a attacker, and he needs to find one now. I mean, he needs to find... I don't think he has a supporter, and I think he's thinking about going for Lele. I, I guess. That looks like what he's deciding, because he's got the Ultra Ball. I mean, if he had a Marshadow, he would, that would be, you know, send it down. But. Right. I think he needs to just go get, like, I would say a Giratina here. He Ultra Balled away the energy. I would say get a Giratina. He's got a Guzma in his hand. Double Psychic Recharge, right? And you know you're not getting that Distortion Door ability activated. But he got rid of the energy. So how is he going to power up the Giratina? I don't know exactly where he's going with this route. but I uh, think getting rid of the Guzma and keeping the energy is probably better. So he could at least attack. Strap in. Let's see. All right. I'm along for the ride here with Zach. Let's see what happens. Thank you so much, Degenerate. Denegenerate. For the bits there. Appreciate the support, my man. All right. Zach's got Giratina on the bench now. He is looking at the Guzma. Now, he does not have enough energy on this Giratina to attack. So I hope he is not guzma in here uh, without attacking. Unless he's got another energy in his hand. Oh, oh. he's got the third Malamar. Oh, okay. that was just hiding well, in there, I guess. Yes, didn't see it. This play, this line makes a lot more sense yes, now that yes. I'm seeing it from this perspective. Yeah. I guess he wants to think about taking out the Jirachi. I mean, because King O's Aptos doesn't really do anything. This is another one there. You so. have to take the Jirachi here. This is a good play by Zach. And then you also need to put the 40 damage not on the Giratina. No, because it has to survive it this turn. It has to survive this turn. <laughs> and, That's and, your only hope. Because if Brady has a Guzma, he can KO something anyway, so it's fine. Exactly. So you got to put it on the Malamar. And Zach does see that and places his 40 damage there on his benched Malamar. It just feels so bad that he couldn't use Giratina's ability to put you know damage counters on the board. Exactly. Brady is acknowledging that Zach has unlocked his trap card here. <laughs> Gonna go grab his buzzwall. And thank you so much, Monty Zach, for the Twitch Prime sub. You can swing for 120, why not, right? Exactly. Well, the thing is, if Brady already has that beast energy in his hand, then that Giratina is a goner. Uh, I guess not. Guess not, though. Maybe it's the Kukui. No, nope, he's just got Guzma on a Malamar, a clean one at that. That's fine. I think not wasting your Zapdos is, is okay. Take advantage of the turn while you have it. You definitely take advantage of that 120 while you have it. Thank you so much, C Sayer22, for the tier one sub as well. So many subs tonight. It's really, really hopping off. Thank you guys so much for the love and support. Enjoy your Woo Poggers emote Enjoy as your well gym as membership. your gym membership. Yes, <laughs> thank you for joining the gym with your new gym membership. Enjoy classic emotes such as Misty Wow. Okay, look at her. Wow, Misty. <laughs> and also, Woopoggers. An instant classic. Yeah, Woopoggers is really good. Yeah. They're really good. Booski, thank you so much for the second month in a row there. Appreciate it. Oh my gosh, we are just uh, getting flooded with 
subs here. Somehow the, the bot just got subbed. Thank you, Natalie, for gifting the bot a sub. How does that work? Oh, my gosh. Oh, is Moobot? Moobot's not a bot. A oh. Moobot's a person. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much, Natalie, for gifting that sub to Moobot. Moobot, welcome. Okay. I guess. Is Moobot our bot? I felt like Moobot was a bot. I don't know. <laughs> Yes, Moobot is our bot. How did our bot get him up? I don't know how this stuff works. And it types too. I don't get I that. I know, right? Oh, because it, the Moobot says sub hype every time someone subs. Oh, even yeah. if it subs to itself. Moobot right. is a bot. <laughs> wow. Oh, yes. All right. Well, our bot is now uh, with gym membership. Thank you, Natalie, Soul for bot. gifting the bot a sub. Ah, very good. I now understand. Technology is hard. Anyways, Old Brady people. has a zebra in the active position. Now, that sprint ability should be fantastic for allowing him to churn through his deck and get the cards that he needs to finish this matchup off. He only has one prize card remaining, but that Zeb Strika's sprint ability, definitely fantastic. Glad he to needs, see that finally hit the board here. He needs two electric power. I think he's got one in his hand, right? He does need two. Thank you, Dark Static. For the sub, sub hype tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub. Anybody out there who's got Twitch Prime, you can get that for free. Okay. And this game's a wrap. Brady Botner is going to take it 1-0 here. Local hero. Local hero. Brady Bot Hands Botner. Uh, really Just farms this this tournament for you guys every week, huh? Oh my gosh, yeah, dude, Brady out here just like thousands of dollars taking names, credit. taking names every week. Yeah, he's <laughs> amassed quite the store credit. <laughs> God, he'll never run out of cards. At that never, point. dude. He shows up I every week with new stuff to get because he just has got it like that. <laughs> <laughs> On the store credit, whatever deck he wants to build, he could do it. Yeah, I saw Brady he had you know he had three Vaporeon GX or three Jolteon GXs, yep. three Flareon GX. I was like. Brady, man, you that's some store credit you got right there. <laughs> Excellent game there. Brady Zapdos deck was able to really just sprint ahead. Zach and Malamar, unfortunately, could not keep pace. Getting ready for round two here at the Wednesday Night League Tournament. We've got Holden Sheiks on the right versus Josh Vardos. I don't know what these players are playing yet. They are getting shuffled up and ready here. And let's uh, hope that we get to see some new team up decks here in action. I know that Josh has favored Lost March before. We've seen him play that, though it hasn't oh, really been going very well for him yeah, lately. Yeah, yeah, I know what he's playing. He's playing his Hoopa deck. Hoopa he was, deck? He was talking about this. Yeah, some Hoopa Coco what? deck. Yeah, I guarantee you this is what he's playing. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I don't even know that I've got a Hoopa downloaded in my system yet. But well, that does sound very exciting. Yes, there it is. I knew it. <laughs> All right. So, Otto, tell me a little bit about the Hoopa Coco deck from what you know about it. So, the idea is that you Coco with Electra Power and, like, Kakui can just, like, take knockouts on Zapdos. And that spread, people like, like Zorark decks are cutting healing cards and stuff like that. Right. So, that spread should have, like, a decent matchup on a lot of things. I don't know how good it actually is, but that's what people are thinking, and that's why they're playing it a lot more. So a spread deck, and I guess the idea is that you hit Zapdos for weakness with Tapu Koko, and then Hoopa works against a lot of the GX decks? Yeah, that's pretty much, pretty much it. All right, and then against Malamar, you just Coco a lot. Yeah, a lot. I mean, really? It, it seems, in theory, because we were talking about this the other day, it's just like, you know, these Simeon, these Coco decks, all that, they seem really good. Just, I don't know, can they get the cards that they need to set up and do it? Yes, I do agree that Tapu Coco just feels like a good card right now. I'll give it that. I did try my hand at playing a little bit of Passimian last <laughs> yeah. night, okay? Now, I wouldn't call myself a Passimian kind of guy, but <laughs> I was in a dark place and found myself with a Passimian deck on PTCGO and was playing it, and Tapu Koko can win a lot of games by itself. I mean, it's scary that Tapu Koko can put 120 damage on the field, and now with Electra Power can do, like, even more. You know, that's pretty insane. Right. Oh, we're going to be able to see the matchup here. It's Zapdos versus the Coco. So. Excellent. Or it I, could be Pikachu. I am excited to see this. Looks like Holden is playing a lightning-oriented deck. He's got that Mr. Mime from Team Up in there. 
Haven't seen Holden here since the new format. So let's see what he's cooked up. Excited to see what he has got in store for us. Holden always plays something unique, so there should be some spice in here. For sure. Holden definitely a unique deck curator here. Looking to try and get this uh, this Hoopa card here into my uh, into my folder. There I don't we go. know if it's going to come out since, you know, if there's Zapdos is in Holden. So. I guess, yeah, he probably doesn't want to actually get that uh, get that Hoopa into play. Should it actually just be a Tapu Koko deck today that we see from Josh's side? I think Josh also plays, like, uh, Rainbows and, like, Ultra Beast Attackers, too. So Okay. Well, that's fair. Holden is setting up his board now. He's got the Stellar Wish Jirachi there in the active and Faulkner grabbing him a lightning energy and a nest ball, which is great. He'll nest ball and we get to see what kind of attackers he's got in the deck. Taking a look, looks like it is more of a Pika Ram deck. I do I see, Zerora, yeah. I see the Zerora for sure. So this should just be a Jirachi focused uh, Pika Ram deck, which is cool. We did see some. I see of, a Jolteon in his hand too. So yes, this could be a list. Uh, I guess similar to the one that finished third place. There was a third place Picaram deck from Oceana. Kaiwen Kababe. Yes, Kaiwen's list did play a couple copies of Jirachi, I believe, and a Jolteon line. It was really just the Lightning Lads. Mm -hmm. It was the mm -hmm. Uh, or the Thunder Buddies, you know. They skipped out a call. lot of other cards, though. Their lines are really short, so. Oh, for sure. It did feel like a like true. That, right? It felt like a true toolbox. Uh, I wasn't the biggest fan playing it this morning. It did feel like it might have lacked in some consistent ways there. Uh, when compared to a more straightforward list like Jose's. But it does have uh, versatility. You give it that. I don't like the low energy count. That's what really, uh, really hurts me about playing that list. I think it only plays maybe like 10 lightning energy, uh, which just felt really, really short. If you prize a couple, it could get really ugly quickly. Mm. All right. Holden's got the uh, skateboard in his hand, so he's going to be able to retreat this Jirachi, and Josh just goes in for an early flying flip. No damage modifiers on that one. Yes. I don't think he supported either. He just put the nest ball down. Yep. Just Josh got was the complaining ditto down. too that this deck bricks, so we'll see. What is he planning on evolving that Ditto Prism Star into? You know? I think a muck. I think the muck is what you'd put in this. Oh, list. wow. Yeah. So it could have muck, which could be good, but I guess if it's a Ditto Prism Star, then I'd have to say that it is. Um, it's probably more than one, just stage one in the deck. Can't just be muck. Yeah. Unless you're doing like the Grimer. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. You know, he probably also has a maybe Zep a Zepstrika. Yeah, yeah, that seems good. I do like the zebra, and then Holden's just got another Volkner, and will be nest balling for somebody else. I wonder if he'll put that attacker down because he doesn't want to take the spread damage from. Oh yeah, yeah he's no, he does go. not. So hopefully he's got an electro power in his hand that he'll be able to use to knock out the Josh's Tapu. active Tapu Koko. There, we already know that he's got the switch card in the escape board, which is good. Yeah, I see the, the electric power in his hand, too. Oh, excellent. See, this was smart by, by Holden. He didn't put anything down besides the Jirachi's last turn. So yeah. like, this Coco just put 40 damage on the board. It's kind of... It's, not it's really underwhelming. Yeah. yeah, it is underwhelming. Not really a lot going on here. All right. Josh is going to promote Tapu Coco while Holden has got his Aptos uh, in the active there doing what it needs to do. And this is... What's cool about the whole Lightning Toolbox thing is that he can play the non-GX game if he needs to. He can throw up the Zapdos, just have a bench with a couple of Jirachis on it, and if he didn't know any better, he'd be looking at Holden's board thinking that it's just a Zapdos Jirachi deck. Right. Which is pretty cool. And he's been able to hold his uh, GX Pokemon in his hand. Uh, he does have the Thunder Mountain Prism Star, so he may have a turn where maybe he kind of benches Zero Aura and retreats, maybe Energy Switch and Thunder Mountain all into one attack with Zero Aura. That could be what we see here. Looks like Josh is... Ultra Balling. He might be going for like a Macargo or something instead. Yes. I think uh, that's the other stage one attacker that, or a Pokemon that he's put in this deck. 
But I, I feel like it's real. You know, you really want to get Muck out in this matchup. So probably he does have the Macargo there pulled to the front of his deck. We also see there is a Slugma in his deck too. He is eyeballing the Muck. Like I don't know. I think Josh definitely needs to stack his deck here with the Macargo, the smooth over. Oh, you can tell he just does not feel good about that either. No, but he's got to. It's I like mean, if he had a draw supporter, I'm sure he would go for the muck. For sure, but he can't. I mean, if Holden knocks out this Tapu Koko, he's going to be in a horrible spot. Uh, I think promoting the Macargo is not what Josh wants to do. And this has been my major concern about like the more... I guess spread oriented decks is that sometimes they just get a little inconsistent. And oh. Ooh, spice. Wow, I like that. Whoa. He's able to judge whistle into the smooth over stack there. That's awesome. Have to say that is something I have not seen before. <laughs> yeah. I've seen that a couple times on the ladder, but yeah, it's cool to see that in practice. Yeah, spicy play from Josh there. I wonder if he plays the Grimer, too, so he can set up the Muck. Potentially. I think that uh, finding the correct draw engine for some of these non-GX decks is kind of tough. A some lot of players playing Jirachi. A lot of players are trying to move away from Jirachi with the high Muck counts in some of like the Zorark decks or, like the, I guess I should say, the increased Muck presence in <laughs> yeah, Zorark decks. True. There's no more than one Muck, but usually a Grimer and a Ditto. That'll scare you. Exactly. So I think that heading for a more McCargo kind of engine with Judge Whistle is very creative. That's very cool here. And then also, uh, Zeb Strika is another option too. Mm -hmm. But I have seen that those Pokemon, you know, it's just a one Pokemon on your bench can easily be targeted down. Especially against the Zapdos deck. Yep, can easily be targeted down. Uh, by a Zapdos deck. Uh, these kind of one of stage ones on the bench can also be targeted down by a Zoroark deck. And it looks like uh, Josh is gesturing to his Electro Power here. Yeah, making saying sure, that the damage was higher there. Yeah, making sure he knows that he See, was that's where hitting you, for weakness. You need the Kukui in this matchup. You, you can't even Electro Power Knockout. You need a Kukui a Zapdos. Yeah. That, feels, that just doesn't feel very good, you know? I think it would be uh, very cool if Josh did play Kakui because then he would be able to Kakui into his smooth overs as well. But oh. we see that Holden is already hip to the fact that this Macargo has got to go. If Holden gets uh, an Electro Power, he could KO this Macargo. That I assume that that's what he was going for here, but he does not find it. He got the switch, so he can at least switch in the other Jirachi. I see shrines in Holden's deck. That completely debunks our yeah, theory Pikaram that he's deck. playing Pikaram. Yeah. I think this is just, just Jolteon Zapdos Jirachi. I think so as well, and I suspect that the card that I thought might have been Zoroora could be a Tapu Koko GX. Ah, that would make sense too. I think that that is probably more likely here. And then uh, Holden's board setup starts to make a lot more sense <laughs> <laughs> if he is just playing Jirachi Zapdos. You never really know with these lightning decks. That's the scary part about them. It's it, like it you is. could drop the Absol, but then they play the Zoroora, and now your Absol is useless, right? Right. That's interesting. Uh, I guess, I guess as a uh, as a Zapdos deck. I mean, if you really wanted to counter Absol, you you know you could play as Aurora in your list. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. Right. <laughs> uh, and give your guys free retreat. And Holden is definitely playing a Volkner heavy version of Zapdos. This is going to be his third Volkner, but I suspect that that is not the supporter he really wants. Well, he Guzma this turn, so he won't be able to play that Volkner yet. No. But he definitely wants the Electro Power off the Volkner to take this KO. Right. It looks like he might just be hitting for 80, unless he's got a Electro Power in his hand. I, oh, yeah, he does. he does. Wow. And that's going to be it. I mean, this is some Zapdos Power. He hasn't played a draw supporter at all, right? He's just been using Jirachi. Vol Jirachi and Volkner to just kind of get the cards he needs. Yep. Turn after turn, he's going to go up a couple prizes here. Now, unfortunately, Josh will be able to take... Ooh, he's going to be able to put a lot of pressure here onto Holden. We see Josh trying to speed things up. He's got the McCargo in his hand already. He's like, all right, you're done playing, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, because he's ready to take the KO. He I wonder if ready. he's going to Guzma this turn to get the the 
the super KO, right? Because you could get the you could act, get the Drachi active. Yeah. You could electro charge or electro power, and then try and take the KO around everything. I actually really like that Holden is going for the EV here. Mm. He recognizes that Jolteon GX actually just does perfect numbers to knock right. out Tapu Koko. No switching needed. Nope. And with Swift Run, the Jolteon GX, you see he's got the Rescue Stretcher already in his hand. So he probably is going to whiff here, I imagine, unless he plays two Jolteon. There it is. He plays two a 2-2 two, two line, I guess. 2-2 two, two line. There it is. And so, so we now is more of just like a Zapdos Jolteon deck then. For that's sure, right? super cool, yeah. I really like that he has got the Jolteon out. Dealing 110 to these Tapu Koko is going to be perfect. And then also Swift Run could just buy him a couple turns that he needs. He's already up a couple prizes. And having a bigger Pokemon that is not weak to liking, Lightning. <laughs> lightning. That is not weak to Lightning is very important here. Yep, yep. I mean, it is a GX, too, so obviously he's offering up two prizes on the board. Yeah, yeah so this is what I was talking about, because he wants to take, like, a two-prize two prize knockout this turn. He is. That's super good. He's got the counter catcher and the Electro Power. Thank you, Dallas the Deal. Uh, let's see. Oh, thank you so much, Sean, for gifting Dallas. A sub. Appreciate it, Sean. Thank you. Sub hype. Welcome, Dallas, to your new gym membership. <laughs> I knew you were going to use it, finally. <laughs> I've done something useful. Yes, you have, Otto. You've created an excellent meme. Thank you. All right, Josh is going to draw a new hand here. Ooh, gets a Slugma, so he can set up the cargo again. Hopefully. He's got the Shrine as well, which is going to be ticking away yep, yep. at that Jolteon every turn here. And, and Holden plays his own shrine, so now he can't even put that down. To thin his deck at all, no. So I'm interested to see what we get here from Holden. And I expect uh, it's a little bit of a bold move unless he's got the, well, he top decked the switch. <laughs> he also has Guzma in his hand, but I feel like at a certain point, ig ignoring the... The Coco situation. Well, what are they? Are they on even prizes right now? They are. So the I guess the counter energy doesn't work, but as soon as he Guzma's around it... Then it's back in play. So. Then it does. You can't just ignore the Coco with the energy in a Coco spread deck. That's the thing, is that a lot of times... You Guzma around it. Well, a lot of times, uh, the way that the, the spread deck fumbles is they miss their energy. Yeah. And yeah. then they lose. They just <laughs> lose. They miss their energy for one turn. Horrible. It's yeah. over. <laughs> it's over. Like you miss that DCE once in that Passimian deck and you just can't do anything. You, you just lose yeah. because you're walking such a tight rope between winning and losing the entire game. That's what the Coco deck does. It goes behind in prizes, right? With the intention of coming back. If you miss an attack, it's over. Like, mm. I lost. You know, so taking out the energy does feel good a lot. But it looks like Holden just has switch, and I fully expect to see a swift run here uh, to protect his. I don't. Does he have an energy in his hand? Jolteon. He put the stadium. Oh, the Thunder play. Mountains out. So that's so he's good great. to go. Wow, that's so yep. good. And then. But this Jirachi's also. I don't a, like benching another Pokemon yeah. here. I really wish he hadn't have done that. Yeah. And he could judge. Wow. That seems good. Jolden. Uh, Holden is playing Judge, so that is uh, that could be a clutch play here. Absolutely. Um, and I don't think he's played a supporter yet, so he should be good to go. All right. So that is a strong play there from Holden. Stadium, he's got the Jolteon in the active. And we get to shuffle up, draw four cards. He's knocking out the Coco with the energy. I like that as no well. No cargo in play. I mean, yeah. Yep. This is a tough spot for Josh. I mean, even if he gets energy in play, he's gonna it's gonna take a while to kill this Jolteon. So. Oh, for sure. Especially if we see a swift run here, and then he's invincible for a turn. And that's. Uh, I might if I don't know. Maybe I'm weird like that. I might save my swift run. Yeah. Actually, no. You have to because Josh plays Buzzwool. So, so. It's true. Yeah. You really, I think you just take the swift run while it's here. I mean, granted, you could be greedy and just say, you know what, I'll not swift run. But then what if Josh just, like, cracks him with, like, a choice-banded, double-electro-powered, you know, flying flip? 
Or just like a beast energy choice banded bus buzzwall. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, 180 damage, right? Then it's knocked out. Mm -hmm. Or even if he gets him like close to a knockout, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think he flipped over the GX counter, so he's just going to take the knockout. Oh, he's not doing it. All right, bold move, Holden. All right, Josh, this now's your time to, to you know. Let's see. Do it. Because I'm thinking that if, you know, maybe another shrine comes into play and the Jolteon gets hit for a lot, you know, maybe it could swift run to hang on for dear life, but it might actually get knocked out by the shrine damage. Just uh, my thought is just something could go wrong where when you swift run, it feels like nothing can go wrong. Yeah, I guarantee no prize is taken next turn. That's better. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I wish the Jirachi, you know, I guess I see it with Holden judging himself just to four cards. He's going to put the Jirachi down just to right. ensure that he doesn't dead draw Especially here. Especially if the Coco Flying Flip KOs the other Jirachi, he wants something to promote active. I but. get that. I do get that for sure. Now, Josh is uh, taking a hard look at this hand here. It can't be good. I think he, I saw him draw a Kukui. I think that's just what he's going to play. Ooh. I but think if he, he's oh. got Macargo, but his Macargo might be down. Oh, that's true. Unless he plays like a two-two line of that, which I, ooh, he does. Okay. I was gonna. I was about to say I doubt it, but <laughs> there it is. But he's ultra balling away the counter energy. Yeah. And to he's, stack something else. He's gonna kakui into whatever, but it's like, oh. Exactly. Whatever, whatever. If it's another energy, it's just gonna get knocked off the board next turn. That just doesn't feel good either. And Josh also needs a secondary attacker lined up. Yeah, the Macargo's can't, inactive. You can't let that Macargo get drug active for sure. Oh, He's going yeah. to stack the rescue stretcher. He must already have the energy. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. Do you see why I told you he needed to swift run? I told you. I told you something's going to go wrong. I told you. I could feel it, okay? And this little... Oh what is my it? God. What Larvitar. is that? A larvitar. That Vitar, little larvitar bro. dude is gonna punish <laughs> Holden, oh, right. sending his Jirachi he or his Jolteon to the Shadow Holden can't Well. Can't believe it. He was like, "Oh, I could have GX last turn." Oh, you should have GX oh, last turn. Goodness. This is a feels bad, guys. A two prizer that only takes one prize. Oh, chat! Please send your Whoop Hoggers for that one. Uh, we need some Whoop Hoggers to the chat uh, stat. <laughs> oh my uh, Holden God. just got next leveled. Wow. There. I can't believe it. The he can't believe it. He, he put it back in play. He wasn't sure it could do that. I'm pretty sure it does. Can't. He kakooied. Yeah. No, it, it is perfect math. It's just, oh, my God. He kakooied, so it is a KO. Yeah. Yep. That is crazy. I'm bringing up the Larvitar now so I can see it. It's the one from Lost Thunder. Busted tar. Second strike. If your opponent's active Pokemon already has three or more damage counters on it, this attack does 70 more damage. So the Larvitar was going to be doing 160 plus Kakui. Uh, actually, well, it's doing even more than it needed 200 to. 200 yeah. base damage. Yeah, <laughs> it was doing uh, 200 damage. Yeah, the idea is with that and Shrine, uh, you can KO a peek around. So exactly. It damage on it. So that is crazy there that this Larvitar, I can't believe I'm downloading it to my folder, but here we go. Larvitar from Lost Thunder. <laughs> going into the card, the card scan. It's going to bring it up so you guys can... Take a peek at it. Take a little peek. Yes, I know indeed. Riley loves this card. Oh, yeah. I've tried playing it before and have immediately not been satisfied. I put it in, like, a Malamar spell tag list, but it just... It never, I never got it It off. never... Never pays off. No. Like, the numbers just don't ever happen. It's just... Feels, exactly. It doesn't feel good. So, <laughs> Salami Bomb asking, missed what did I miss? <laughs> yeah, you missed a lot. This Larvitar came in here. And uh, took some prisoners. Holden feeling really bad that he didn't GX there. I don't know. He does play a 2-2 two, two Jolteon line, so I guess he might be able to whoop it back up again. I don't think you, you whoop it up back again versus this versus No. This deck. I think at this point you just try to Zapdos that Larvitar and hope that nothing bad happens <laughs> from here on out. <laughs> but at this point, Josh has got the Mugcargo stabilized, so he should just be good to go. But, wow, Holden actually has an ace roll-up. Yeah. That's really that's, interesting. Yeah. Oh, Acerola in a non-GX deck. Or, well, I guess there's Jolteon in there, but... Exactly. So just imagine now, you know, I guess Holden, knowing that he had Acerola in hand... You were right. That's a Zeraora. Oh, yeah. That is a Zeraora. Uh, Holden really wanted to tank a hit with the Jolteon and then potentially Acerola it up. Yeah. Uh, which would have been great. <laughs> and he almost had it, too. Right. <laughs> 
it wasn't for Larvitar off the judge. God, Larvitar, insane. Insano play there. Josh drawing into exactly what he needed to punish Holden. Holden's going to grab a... Zapdos, I feel like, right? He's gonna... Yeah, Nest Ball here. He's probably searching out Zapdos, if I had to guess. Because that was his second Jolteon, right? That he... was his second Jolteon. the Ultra Balled one away earlier in yes. the game. He's going to opt for another Jirachi, potentially looking for something that he hasn't seen here yet. I mean, I guess in his mind, well, I mean, Josh isn't taking any knockouts specifically next Oh, time. this is this a, a Coco, Coco GX turns. play. He needed just a placeholder <laughs> for the for, for the energy. energy. Here comes Coco GX. There it is. Oh, there you are. With the Thunder Mountain, too. That's real nice. And he's got the return knockout, so Holden's deck is not giving up on him just yet. He really has everything he needs to take this knockout if Josh can't I wonder Respond. if Josh plays the Nihilego, because Holden's on two prizes. Oh, my gosh. That would be insane, right? If Josh goes Nihilego choice band, That's he could it. Tapu Thunder GX the right. game. <laughs> oh, that would be another Poggers moment for sure. That is uh, uh, scaring me just thinking about it, <laughs> making me nervous. I mean, at this point, we've already seen the Larvitar play. <laughs> I feel like we could see anything. So, Holden Scott, Tapu Koko GX there in the active position. Sky High Claws should be enough damage there to knock out anything in Josh's deck. And I think both players just have two prizes remaining. Holden is not out of this one yet, as crazy as that is, which I think is one of the other reasons why spread just makes me so nervous. Like, Happy to do this, right? Well, You're... Josh has just been in command this entire game, but somehow hasn't won yet. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, could still definitely lose. I mean, he's just going to look <laughs> at three cards, right? I mean, he gets to smooth over one of them, but that doesn't guarantee him a win. No, because he could need a three-card combo or yeah. even four, <laughs> you know? It's just a lot here. Tapu Coco GX also no weakness on that fella. So he's not going to be able to uh, really Buzzwole cheese him with any, it. exactly. There's not going to be any Buzzwool, you know, Beast Energy Choice Band kind of knockout coming out here. I don't think Josh got an energy off that instruct. This is so crazy to me. Oh, he's going to, he, he did not smooth over before that instruct. Oh, I think he did. That's why he tapped the oh, card. Oh, okay, that's no. okay, yeah. okay. That makes sense. I okay. was like, oh my god, that's like, that's an alpha play, you know? I, like, <laughs> I think, no, I think he's he might have stacked the lily because he was going for more cards. Right, right, right. I see a counter, but he can he play that? No, he can't. That doesn't feel good. Yeah. So it's looking like Josh's deck, even with the explosive knockout on the Jolteon that we said should have never happened, right? It's looking like it's still petering out over here uh, and may not be able to topple this very vanilla Tapu Koko GX in the active, just dealing 130 damage for the next two turns, right? Yeah, Holden's Acerola on the Jirachi is huge, too. That was really big, and because that's, that's what like I'm saying. that's like a win con, right? You kill one Jirachi and then one more, and then you're done, right? Right, but that's the thing about spread is that, oh, wow. Josh is tied on prizes, but acknowledges that he can... Oh, right. He can Thunder Mountain, and the counter counts as one. Exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. So I think... But wait, does the... No, because the Thunder Mountain Prism Star, does that, it makes it cost one lightning less, right? Yeah, don't allow this play, I don't think. Right? It makes it one lightning less? It is one... Yeah, don't allow this. Say in the chat, don't allow this play. Thunder Mountain uh, is one lightning li lightning less. Wow, it's a good catch. Andrew, you're yep. getting really good at this. I know, right? And I watch so much Pokemon now. Um, it's one lightning less. Coco's attack cost is two colorless. Otto, yep. I might have you go run out if he uh, okay. if I he if stopped, he tries right? to flying flip. Yeah, go run. So, oh, are they still playing? I thought maybe Natalie caught it or she was over there. No, they should be cool. But not uh Because Josh put his cards, I think they're talking about it right now. Yeah, they're probably talking about it. Yes, Natalie is there. She says it doesn't work. She has acknowledged it. All right. So it looks like Josh might have to pass here. 
I think he did because Holden's about to And he return. did. That is it. Oh, big yikes. Not even a Nile Lego will save him now. Yep. That's looking like Holden is going to be able to just finish this game off. Don't you just retreat into something, though, at that point? like? Oh, Josh just leaving the dude active. I think Josh attempted to enter his attack phase. Oh, so that's just And it. that's it. You can pick another attack or pass. Fair. That's, <laughs> that's fair. it. Once you enter the uh, attack phase, it's game over. Yeah, so Josh is going to lose that one. Wow. Yeah. And a crazy... That's why you don't play spread, folks. ...turn in of events there. We saw the Larvitar play. <laughs> that was awesome, though. That was super sick. Then the spread deck just petered out. Wasn't able to get there against Holden's cool little Zapdos toolbox deck. Gearing up for round three here at the Full Grip Games Wednesday Night Shop Tournament, we've got Jesse Parker on the left versus Dana Woods. Dana Woods is a local player here who uh, was asking me what deck he should play before this event, and I handed him the Venusaur deck. And now he's 2-0. And now he's 2-0. Here he is. <laughs> yeah. So Dana's like, give me something that's not too complicated, and I'm like, oh, Venusaur will do just the trick. Uh, oh. So he uh, should be uh, doing pretty well. I mean, 2-0, he was able to beat Zorark Lycanroc round one. I can't tell if Jesse's playing Picarama or Zapdos. It's always so hard to tell. Exactly. Jesse is playing Picarama. Oh, took okay. a little. I uh, actually went out and I scouted beforehand and took a little peek at his deck to see what he had in store for us. So this is actually kind of a close matchup, somewhat. Yes. So should be interesting because Picarama can do enough damage to team. knock out a Venusaur. Burn all the powers and everything down. Right. And then, uh, you know, Dana, this is his first time ever playing the deck. Uh, so we'll see how he, uh, how he fields this one. Dana plays a bunch of different trading card games here at Full Grip. Uh, he plays Magic, he plays Keyforge, and then he dabbles in Pokemon as well. He's trying to build a tool drop deck, but he doesn't quite have all the cards ready for it. Mm. So this is a loner deck from the, uh, the Mahone catalog. <laughs> this is, uh, <laughs> and I'm glad to see that it's getting some legs here because I bought these Venusaurs, so I want them to go to use. <laughs> wow. And I'm glad that they're, uh, you know, I'm glad they're out here doing their thing. So tell me a little bit about your thoughts about Venusaur here, Otto. Okay, so it's like, it's like the stall deck that just loses to stall decks. It's kind of funny that way. So like Venusaur just, I don't know if it can, you know, beat a lot of other mill decks sure. itself, but it's like positioned in a sense where it can hold its own against Zapdos, uh, you know, assuming you don't put too many energies down and they Coco GX you. Sure. But I, I'm not sure. I've played the Picaram versus Venusaur matchup once before, and, like, I did struggle to find all the pieces to, like, do the Actually damage. Actually knock out a Venusaur. Yeah. Right. But it also didn't feel like the Venusaur player had many, you know, outs to just, like, take me out easily. Right. So. So. They're kind of just slugging away at 150, yeah. and that's just it. It's very good against Zorark, so I mean, you know. Exactly. So uh, why don't you think Venusaur had a showing at the uh, at the international championships this past week? I think the Picaram factor was the biggest thing. Um, people are talking about it now because it's like, okay, Zapdos, Zorark, Venusaur is pretty good versus those, so like now it could be a contender. Sure. That Picaram's on the down the downfall but just a deck that can do 270 on its second or third turn is just kind of insane sure and you don't want to put a 270 hp pokemon up against that so that's fair so uh when you said venusaur is a stall deck that can't be other stall decks what other stall decks even are there there's well, no other stall decks in format right so now so there's like zoro control that won the seniors division uh -huh. And I don't... The one, the seniors division of what? Internationals? Of, of OCIC. Really? Yeah. Ah, well, I should start watching seniors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. Okay. So there is Zoro Control still out there alive yeah, and well. it exists. Yeah. So you can, like, you know, muck the shamans and then obviously energy denial the, the Venusaur itself, too, so... All right, looks like Natalie is just asking for Dana to spread his prizes out a little bit. So we can see. Yeah. It's all good. We got it. All right, looks like Dana is on the draw here. He's got a Venusaur in the active position. Sorry. And Dana is going to opt to Acro Bike. Sick. All right, take a look at those top two cards. And you got to love the way that uh, 
and that Dana looks at the cards there kind of upside down. Hey, everybody, to each their own, man. Everybody understands cards differently. And like I said, Dana plays a bunch of different card games. Yeah, Pokemon that looks like is, a magic move right it there. It is so magic. Scry, very you know. magic. That is a very magic-esque <laughs> feel. Movement. You'll see Dana is a regular magic player here. So if he does some things that look magic-esque, excuse him. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't okay. been fully indoctrinated yet. He no, not yet. Yes, Dana is a big Pokemon fan, though. And Dana was also very excited that uh, there is a Pokemon card named Dana. So, oh, right, yes, the one of the hat ladies. The hat ladies, yes. <laughs> He's very excited that there was a hat lady named Dana, so that is a... Uh, Let you take two cards from your deck if you have a stage two, if your opponent has a stage two. Yes, Pretty very good. cool. So Dana is just going to get out a, a bunch of uh, oh, shamans and another Venusaur here. Mm -hmm. Can't argue with that. Mm -hmm. A very straightforward deck. Dana is going to just start attaching energy and then... Go to Pollen Hazard Town, hopefully. <laughs> That's just where he wants to go. God, I love Pollen Hazard. I know. It's such an incredible attack. Burn, Confuse, and Poison. The unfortunate thing is Jesse will have free retreat from Zero Aura, you know, so you can just kind of, like, move in and out For of that sure. stuff. For but... sure. It looks like Dana's just going to slap that Life Force there and play. Yeah, he ain't messing with Dana. Nope. He's like, do damage to me. I dare you. Dare you, dude. I dare you. All right, Jesse is going to start off here with a nest ball of his own. He's got the Tapu Koko Prism Star there in the active position. And he's going to be looking for a Pikachu Zekrom, I guess. I guess. Yeah. I mean, he's just going to want to get that turn one lightning energy attachment to a Pikachu Zekrom. Just power him up. With the idea of getting a turn two attack, probably. A turn two full blitz. But uh, it could get weird... You know, if Dana is able to just kind of confuse him, and then he can't attack and do the, you know, do the thing, I get it. He exactly. Might, he might just, you know, just slowly attach to the Pikaram for five turns until you're ready to tag bolt and have all the modifiers in your hand, and then for sure go to, you know, destroy something. That's true. Dana also could just put pressure on. I mean, what's crazy is that the Venusaur deck just seems so slow, right? Mm -hmm. But really, it's two turn, attachments. Turn yeah. two Pollen Hazard. That's a turn. That's like pretty aggressive attack. You're knocking yeah. out Jirachis. Mm -hmm. You're knocking out uh, all sorts of Pokemon. Like, uh, I mean, if you're going against Zorak, you're knocking out a Zerua turn two. Rock Ruffs. Rock Ruffs, yeah. all that, right? And then turn three, 150 damage coming from a 270 hit point basic Pokemon. Yep. Getting healed every turn, right? Aether Paradise. Also... I mean, Aether Paradise, let's talk about that. Dana plays way more stadiums than Jesse. Yeah, the Aether Paradise is weird. I mean, obviously, it makes Dana do less damage to Jesse, but I think that's fine, right? You just play a long game with Venusaur anyway, so. Yep. So, let's see. Jesse is going to go ahead and get a big turn one Lily here, uh, which is great. And then is going to be looking to turn through his deck a little bit more. Deciding between what looks like a Tapu Koko GX and an Ultra Ball. Dana could also hit some early crushing hammers on mm. Jesse. Mm. Now, if Dana, I'd say if Dana can hit like three crushing hammers. Just be really lucky with those heads. Like yeah. three. It'll set him back a ton. Then sure. Jesse could just struggle and never get that big attack that he's looking for until it's too late. At a certain when it's too late, I'm saying like once Dana already has the four energy on his first Venusaur and starts getting like two on a second, <laughs> it's too late. It is, yeah. yeah <laughs> it's just true. too late. That's true. That is true. As soon as like the game is not just over, when you uh, knock out that first Venusaur, if there's another Venusaur ready to go, it feels horrible. Looks like Jesse is going to discard that Ultra Ball there. Um... Wants to get energy in the discard for the Coco Prism. Yes, for sure. I feel like he's going to get like a zero or oh. And yeah. he's going to Ultra Ball away the Coco GX and a Lightning Energy, searching his deck for There's a zero or. the Zorora, giving him free retreat. Now, some lists, hopefully he plans on, it uh, looks like he might let loose this turn. I was going to say, that is not quite the shuffle I'm looking for. <laughs> it looks like he's I going hope he's back not in. done there. No, yet, it looks right? like he's not quite done yet, so that's fine. Oh, he's going into the Pikaram. Jesse loves the hyper aggressive Pikaram. Like, like he Jesse in the core of his being believes he's gonna get a turn one full blitz <laughs> every single time. Okay. 
So if Jesse How can he even do Jesse it? will retreat. If he's going to retreat here, he's retreating to the Picaram with the intent of attacking. And he believes he's getting it here off the let loose. Oh he's already god. got the energy oh switch. Oh my god! You're, I told you're you. You're right. Wow. I told you. He believes in the core of his body that he has it. This is yeah. so greedy. Oh my goodness! Because if he misses and he gets pollen hazard, it's feels bad. Yeah. For sure. Because a pollen hazard plus the 150 attack is enough. I'm telling you, he's got the electro power here. That boy is retreated. He's out there now. <laughs> There's no walking this yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, like, this is done. Just are, yeah, you definitely don't electro power there. I mean, Playing what is he the, looking for? A thund I mean, he has to find he another needs, energy switch and an energy. He's getting Thunder Mountain and an, an energy switch. That's what he's on the hunt for. Oh, my it's a or, or double energy switch. Or multi-switch energy switch. Now, I don't know if he's playing the Pablo Mesa list. I mean, uh, the, the Jose Pablo. Marrero? The, that's what I meant. The Jose Marrero list. Uh... What did pa oh, Pablo just top top cutted something big too, though. Dude. I felt like Pablo. Just... Pablo also made a video on it today. Oh, too, Pablo so. made a video on it. Okay, so uh, the Jose Marrero list here, which is playing a bunch of copies of Multi Switch. I just made a video on Jose's list today. Uh, let's see. I got one half of it. <laughs> see, so he was. He was so close. I mean, you're right. There are six energy switch cards in that deck. So. But the belief was very strong. Yeah. I would have never made that Believe no. Land play for sure. No. <laughs> no. Um, but you know what? Jesse's most of the way there. And it looks like, you know, he has already retreated. He's not going to be able to... Get the peak ROM out. Uh, ...retreat into Zapdos or anything like that. He would just have to energy switch there onto the active. But I think, to be honest, is. I wouldn't energy switch yet. You just hold it. Yeah. And then the ball's in Dana's court. He needs to find a DCE so he can, you know, punish Jesse for putting that Pikaram active. For sure. That's what Dana wants here. Looks like he's trying to make a little more room on his bench. Here's another sore. <laughs> <laughs> Venusaur. All right. And he's looking to maybe Lily here. So he's got a nest ball as well. He can get that third shaman if it's in the deck. Are there only three in that deck? There are only okay. three, yes. He could get either the third Shaman or maybe another Venusaur. Is this your version without buff padding? This is, it is or without I mean, buff padding. It's not my version. It was a Japanese list oh, that did he's well. He's just going for Venusaur. Dude, you've got to respect this board position, okay? I, I mean, you gotta what, is, what are the extra Venusaurs doing? It's purely uh, an alpha move, it's right? It's purely an alpha play from Dana <laughs> here, okay? Add up the HP, right? I'm just saying, <laughs> at a certain point, it doesn't actually, like, matter. I think, like, well, Dana does need to be careful. This deck does not play a lot of switch cards, but he doesn't know that. I handed this deck to Dana, like, right before the event, so he didn't actually know, like, what was necessarily in the deck, but, uh, you know, you gotta respect the uh, just the pure aesthetic of four Venusaur in play. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and also, uh, you could say, yes. Uh, actually, McStapp did send me this list a long time ago. Thank you, Demonic. Yes, AKA McStapp. Thank you. Uh, but yes, Dana. Uh, you could argue oh, that there it he is. was. I, you could argue that he was thinning the Venusaur out of his deck to make sure he hit sure, the yeah. DCE. Maybe the other Shaman was prized, and he just was thinning the deck. I'll give it to him. Oh, yeah. the, sh the other Shaman is prized. Dana would have gone for the Shaman, I think. Yeah. Okay, so. this is great. He is punishing Jesse. He's putting 80 damage on the board. And Jesse has got to be like, why did I go for the alpha play? Right. Like, that was a pure... So hyper-aggressive. Now, Jesse might not get a turn two full blitz. No. If he had it, right? just left any other Pokemon in the active position, he could have retreated in full blitz this turn. Yep, yep. Totally fine. And that Picaram is, like, KO-able now, too. Oh, so. for sure. Like, 150 plus this burn damage uh, is going to be tough for Jesse to weather here. And Jesse only has a few card hand. His bench space is really low, too. I mean, look, he's going to... Attack with Zeraora, right? I know. Because <laughs> he's I got know. the energy switch in hand. so He's he gonna... does. He can't go in with the Zeraora. He's got to get out of this mess that he's in for sure. And he's just going to crack this Venusaur for 160, maybe 190 damage if he's got an Electro Power. So he's going to heal off at least 100 next turn. Yeah. I mean, if Jesse can't find his Thunder Mountain Prism Star or a uh, Viridian Forest to counter the life forest, then a hundred of this is just getting vanquished. Yep. Yeah, instantly. Yep. And that's not counting any sort of potions that Dana might have in his hand. 
Dana could also just start ripping some crushing hammers. Uh, now that uh, Jesse, and Jesse's got no one oh, damage mod, power, yeah. but no counter stadium, so that life forest is sticking. Do you, as the Venusaur player, start powering up a benched Venusaur now, or do you put the energy on the active and swing for 150? Oh, you definitely put on the benched, yeah, I think. Yeah. Um, I think that, well, I don't want to say definitely, because Dana could opt to GX here. Mm. I don't think he has to, but he could. I mean, if he's feeling like it, he could. I don't think that you necessarily need to, but it's not bad. Uh, There's no choice bands or anything, right? So no. he can't take a knockout on this arrow aura then. Um, no, he's not taking a knockout on the Sorora. He needs to two-hit KO it. Mm -hmm. So the first attack probably should just be the, uh, you know, he could go for another Pollen Hazard. It looks like he wants Solar Beam. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's into it. <laughs> I got to respect Dana Because, I that. mean, the Zeroar can't attack anyway, so it has to retreat. He might as well put as much damage on it yeah. as possible. Right? Dana is gesturing that he is going to use these guys. I gave Dana approximately a 10-second lesson on how to play this deck. <laughs> I was like, you attach all your energy to Venusaur and you heal him off with these guys. <laughs> he's like, oh, yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your plant alive. Keep the plant alive. All right. Now, Dana also going to need to remember to life forest here. Uh, hopefully, he remembers that. I know he did a great job of remembering the uh, the Shamans. Keep in mind, this is Dana's first time ever playing this deck as well. So, uh, okay. You're right. If he gets a Crushing Hammer, knocks Energy off the peak around on the bench. I know. Oh my god. Horrible what, what spot. Is, what is Jesse going to do? <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, Come on, Dana. I'm rooting for you. Dana. I know. Dana could just GX him, dude. Uh, he could GX him as well. 180 damage. Like He could just be feeling kind of like threatened. Um <laughs> Oh, Dana forgot the stadium. No, Dana. Oh, he oh, forgot. No. It's okay. Maybe he didn't read the stadium yet either. It's, he could, like I said, it's his first time ever playing the deck, so just forgot the stadium. Uh, We've all forgotten a feather arrow once or twice before. You know, it happens. Sometimes yes. you Here's got the thing, on though. your board, just don't put it there. That Zorora can't attack this turn. No, he's got to retreat into the Picaram, attach, energy switch again. Fullness. I know, in which case then... Jesse, you know, might be not punished here. But I am, uh, oh my gosh, yeah, that, that life forest is going to make a big difference there. The difference between 210 health. Uh, oh my goodness, is Jesse just going to use yeah. the Raikou? I think he is. He could go in with Zapdos this turn. Does that take a knockout? No, uh, 120 damage. That thing still has like 150 hit points left. So he's gonna, he's got choice band. I mean, that helps. He's got an energy switch. Oh, you know, Jesse is very excited to use Pika Rob now. <laughs> <laughs> you saw him just put it down. Oh, yeah, there he are, goes. There Absolutely. we go. Oh, all right. All right. To be fair, even with the life forest heal, Dana's thing was going down. That's there. why I think the attach to the Venusaur. I think you have to good. attach to the bench there. But like I said, Dana's first time playing the deck, so I'm proud of him for being 2 0, man. Uh, for sure. All right. Yeah, Jesse's going to move in and get a full blitz going on here, which is going to unfortunately knock out Perfect Dana's right Venus or, yeah, do just what he needs to do to take that knockout. So that is sad. Dana has to promote. Oh, no. Yeah, he's Jesse setting up to just win, basically. Yeah, he knows that that uh, the Venusaur can't attack. It cannot <laughs> at all. No. So that is a safe play there. That's just how insanely good Picaram is. I know. It is just so good. They, they get a board state advantage, and then they get to attach three energies and have an insane board state advantage. I know. It all happens so fast is a thing. <laughs> it really goes from zero to 60 very quickly. Like your, your active just got knocked out, and now you're looking down the barrel of a four prize turn next turn. It's insane, you know? Yeah. So let's see. All right, Dana. Yeah, I don't know if your crushing hammers can do it right now. You need to hit all four heads. All right. Yep. Respect this, Dana. Yeah, sure. Going to the benched one, but uh, with one Picara or with one uh, Venusaur already down. Oh, he's got Judge. That's good. That is good. With one Venusaur already down, all Jesse needs to do is just knock out this active Venusaur and it's game. Right. He's at 230 as of the math right now. Right. 
so you need his double electric power to do it, which, I mean, isn't easy. He's already played at least two, right? Right. So. And an Aether could make it even harder. The Aether would be good at this point. I think Dana needs to rip an Aether so that he doesn't forget, because uh, he can't really forget Aether. He's just going to not get calculated. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's, that's true. That's all good. It's cool. I believe in Dana. I think he can do this. I like that he attached the DC to the bench Venusaur. He recognizes that, yeah, we're going to need some magic to happen here. We're going to need a clean attacker to go in at some point. For sure. So what Dana needs is he needs, first of all, Jesse to not draw anything. <laughs> yeah, right. There's an electro power in Jesse's there hand. There is an electro power in that hand, but Jesse needs one more. All right. Oh, he's got the Aether. He's got the Aether. Hopefully he doesn't play it yet because Jesse's got the Thunder Mountain. So, like... Dana needs to not play that Aether quite oh, yet. Or yeah. the Aether could, I guess the Aether could keep him from knocking out this active Venusaur. Looks like he's just going to Judge Whistle, get that Judge back to his hand. That's cool. But, uh, and he's just going to pass with the life, life Force there. Now, as Jesse, you could just full Blitz and then set up your knockout for the next turn. I think that's kind of what you... Or you all in him. No, I think you just full <laughs> Blitz. I mean, it'd be kind of cool to just, like, all in, right? I think you... I think, I think he's eyeing it up. Look. Okay, no, he's not. I think you full blitz. Dang. Feels like a full blitz to me. Because if you full blitz here, then you deal 150. You save your 200, right? Mm. For later when you're ready to, like, double, in case you get double electro power choice band knockout. And that, uh, unfortunately, Prism Star Stadium is going to go. And let's see, Jesse. Oh, no, he's in on tag bolt. And we'll knock out probably a benched. Sh oh, actually, he's just going to deal 170. Damage I think he has a Guzma in his hand, and he just wants to guarantee that one of them is dying next turn. I think that that's, that's totally fair. That's fine. Exactly. If Jesse's already got the Guzma in hand, then this just makes a lot of sense. Because there's no max potions or anything in this list. Right? No, there's not. So Jesse already knows that. Uh, Yes, if he's got Guzma, there's no way that Dana can wipe all this energy off the board this turn. And I like that Jesse is following the energy. He knows that he needs to damage the Venusaur with the DCE on it. Taking the a cheap prize on the shame, and it doesn't matter. Doesn't actually matter. The Venusaur with the DCE on it could theoretically Guzma up uh, Jesse's Zorora there and knock it out, mm. which you know would be tough if Jesse hadn't have damaged it and it knocked out a shaman instead. Then it could have gotten kind of ugly there. Is there a Cerola? Is there any way to get all this damage off? Oh, uh, no. Dana? Dana's kind of done for it. Oh, yeah. yikes. All right. You know? See, this you is know. what I'm saying. Sometimes. It's all right, the Dana. Sar, bro. The we sar. were close. This is the reason. you. I asked you earlier. I said, you know, why did Venusaur underperform at, uh, you know, at Oceana? And I think probably Picaram was the scared, answer. Yeah, yeah Picaram is the answer. It's why Venusaur can't. You know, can't really hang in the well, you know standard what the format. The real answer is right. What's that? Vikasaur, dude. What is Vikasaur? Vikasaur. What? It's my meme deck. It's V Vikavolt Venusaur. Oh, busted. And you just like max potion every turn, and then you just attach the energies back and you oh, attack. Oh my gosh. It's busted, bro. It's busted. I mean, busted. I'm sure once you set up that engine, you probably don't lose. Yeah, it sounds kind of busted. Riley <laughs> thinks it's awful, but I think it's <laughs> glorious. V and it's a beautiful name, too. Vikasaur? Are you kidding right. me? Right. Oh, for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, I don't know. Can the Shamans, they can't heal from the bench, right? Yeah, no. I think they need to heal the active. Yeah, that's what Dana's kind of realizing there. So, yeah, Dana's going to try and heal off the <laughs> Venusaur a little bit with the Shamans, but unfortunately that is not going to save him here. Uh, 40 damage uh, is And I lot. think that Dana's yeah, just going to scoop it. her up. Yeah, he realizes that it's a lost cause there. Hey, man, you know what? If nothing else, we got to cheer on all four Venusaurs being in play oh, at the same yeah, time. yeah. Well, that was pretty exciting. The most Venusaurs you can possibly get in play. Well, a GX is at least. Twelve prizes worth of Venusaurs. <laughs> I'm gonna, how much HP is that too? It's, it's like a ton of hit points. I'm not doing the three. Math. It's like three. It's it's uh three hundred minus. It's a thousand. It's, it's like a thousand something. Two four six eight. It's I a thousand eighty. A thousand minus one twenty. It's a thousand eighty, isn't it? I'm gonna quick math it. Say it's a thousand eighty. Yeah, two four yeah, six eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It is 1,080 because the 250 times 4. Yeah, because you're doing 300 times. Oh, you do 300 times 4. So See, you're doing it backwards. I would rather do it 200. No, no, you're, no, no, no. <laughs> 250 <laughs> times 4 plus 20 times 4. You're the one who said you weren't going to do the math, and here we are. So doing the I math. I won, actually. Uh huh. Well, I had the correct answer 1,080 first. HP. On to our fourth and final round here at the Wednesday League tournament we've got nick moses on the right versus jesse parker on the left nick is going to be showing us ultra necrozma malamar and jesse has his pikachu and zekrom tag team gx deck i was talking with otto a little bit i think that nick should have the upper hand advantage here with that marshadow gx probably in his list which mm -hmm. can hit these huge lightning type pokemon for weakness and then also ultra necrozma can just take huge knockouts for three psychic energy discarded. Should be an exciting matchup for sure, though Jesse did say that his list does play some non-GX Pokemon auto. Do you think those are going to help him out at all in this matchup? I mean, I'm not a huge fan of, you know, cutting. I don't know if he's playing. Did he say he put the Zapdos in the list? I think he does say that he plays maybe a Raikou or two and Oh, we did see the Raikou. So, I mean, he can get some, like, early knockouts on NK with that, but, like, I feel like in this matchup, you're just trying to race the Ultra Necrozma to get as many prizes as possible. I so think I think I agree with that. Yeah. I think maybe attaching to the Raikou and Guzma in case is a mistake. So we'll I think see. so. I think Jesse really just wants to stay the course here, get a turn two full blitz, turn one if he can. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we know. Hey, if Jesse goes for the turn one full blitz again, I'm just gonna. <laughs> I'll lose my, my head. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can get it. It's just you can get it. Everyone's got the Lysia from their decks, so it's not you're not really going for that anymore. No, the Lysia I think uh, ended up just being a little less consistent than you want because it's just a dead card later in the game. No, I'd rather just see more cards on my first turn than just try and pull off some stupid combo like that. You just want a Lily for eight. Yeah. That's just, that's the dream. That should get you everything you need if you can. Almost every deck wants to Lily for eight turn one. Even Zorark decks yep. have just admitted Elm defeat <laughs> <laughs> and just want a Lily for eight. With yeah, Pokecom, I mean, it's the, possible. The game is so aggressive now that you, you just don't have time to just go search out your basics and not do anything with them. So, And what's hilarious about the tempo of a lot of decks right now is that they'll have explosive turns, turn ones with Lily because mm. they play four copies of Lily. And then it's uh, the draw support just peters off. Oh, yes. There's so many turns I've seen people just draw it, and there's nothing in there. There's nothing in there. <laughs> Not even an energy. We saw Dankus this weekend. <laughs> he he lilies twice for eight cards. No energy inside. Right. That's just insane. And then you have this eight-card hand, and you, sometimes you'll play, like, zero cards for it, and Cynthia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so bad. <laughs> it's like, what did I do that for? <laughs> All right, these guys are going to go ahead and get started. Jesse's got that Raikou in the active against Nick's Tapu Koko. And it does look like Nick is playing his Malamar deck. How do you think Tapu Koko fits into the deck, Otto? What do you think about that? Oh, it's super good in the mirror because you can just set up the Sky Scorching Light a lot easier. So it easy. takes one ping from the Tina and then a flying flip, and boom, you're in the magic numbers right there. So Not only that, it's a free retreater throughout the course of the game. And they can pivot off of alternate Necrozma, attach energies, and then go back in. Exactly. So I think the Tapu Koko Prism Star, or not Prism Star, promo, <laughs> is just a shoe-in for this deck. It really, really does wonders, especially in that mirror, if you're expecting to see the mirror. I don't think we're going to see it used much this game besides as a pivot obviously yeah the pivot is a big deal but even just having it as a pivot can be very important see nick is playing nest balls i do think that a lot of these malamar decks have started to go for like a nest ball mysterious treasure engine i think that that's very cool uh, i like it free search is just so good nest balls like almost too good for a deck not to play right yep oh my goodness he's gonna get all the ink Oh, he's going to go for the Lily. Yep. Turn one Lily, that's what I'm saying. Everybody wants... The turn one Lily. The turn one Lily. That's all you want. Missing it is a huge, huge... I've said it a lot today, but feels bad, so... <laughs> it is. So there's just, uh, you know, the draw in this format. Cynthia, sure. It's a good supporter. 
It's just not as aggressive as Professor Juniper. It's not as aggressive as Professor Sycamore, right? We're in a bit of a combo format where, like, you need, like, okay, in the electric power choice band, I need this energy here. Yeah. So, like, Lily feels better to try and get all those pieces, whereas Cynthia, you're just trying to hope you, you get them all off the six. Right. Exactly. And what's uh, hilarious about the Lily engine is that every deck needs to set up. So every deck plays these high counts of Lily, right? Because you just need it turn one. You're It's such a disadvantage if you Cynthia turn one and get nothing. Right. Right. And so you really want to Lily for eight. Uh, and uh, then you just have this deck full of Lilies, which is a suboptimal draw for the rest of the game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's so many times where like I'll clear my hand and I'll force myself to use the Lily because it's never going to be good again later in the game. Exactly. So. There's a lot of hands where you're just like, all right, Lily for three? <laughs> sure, I guess. <laughs> and I had to make some suboptimal like card lays just to Lily for three. <laughs> yeah, how, right? It's, it's a how bad. at some point. How would have been better because at least I could have kept that rescue stretcher in my hand. <laughs> like, you're you right, because you're playing cards down <laughs> to Lily, saying. right? Oh saying. my goodness. Uh -huh. Exactly. Looks like Jesse is going to go and grab the turn one Pikachu Zekrom there with a nest ball. Shuffle his deck up a little bit. And if he's shuffling, it doesn't mean he's going back in then, does he? I uh, don't think so. So Nick has a fine board set up. I would have preferred to have seen a third Inke drop there mm -hmm. on his side of the board, but you know, you get what you get, and that is it. Yeah, that's situations like this where I would love to just get a Zapdos and hit, knock an Inke out, right? Because if they've only got two, they can't really power up anything next turn if you knock one out. Right, and I think Nick is just very fortunate having started the Tapu Koko. We know that Jesse probably would have, yep, yep. Electro Power knocked out an Inke if that was in the active position. Absolutely. Uh, I think that there's no way that Jesse's Raikou ends up taking out a He's got to like escape rope or Tapu something. Tapu Koko here, but I do think that Jesse may have the opportunity to two hit KO the Koko if Nick doesn't find a turn two attack, mm -hmm. then that could be something that we see. Now, I don't know if I actually see any ways in Jesse's hand to discard energy. So he may not get to play off of this Raikou's attack here. And that could be uh, a little bit tough. I mean, just dealing 30 damage and getting your energy attachment without getting to accelerate is not ideal. Puts you a turn behind on your Pikaram setup, which is uh -huh. never good. Exactly, especially if Nick is able to take out the Raikou, right? Mm -hmm. Because if Nick can take out the Raikou, then uh, we're going to see Jesse lose an energy attachment. You don't want to be an energy attachment behind in this deck. Your energy attachments are kind of everything with the Pikaram deck, especially in the first turn. In a weird way, it feels similar to uh, kind of old Verizian Genesect, right? Like, you just, uh, I mean, we think about Verizian EX, right, just a few years ago. But for two energy, Emerald Slash allowed you to deal 50 damage, and then you searched your deck for two energy and attached it to one of your benched Pokemon. Uh, full Blitz is a little bit of a different beast. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, I mean, because like our, the most recent version is like Lorantis GX, which is right. an evolution, only does 40. Accelerates um, two from the discard, discard pile. pile. Right. Yeah, Full Blitz is on a tier I've never seen before. Not in the Pokemon trading card game has an attack ever just accelerated energy and dealt damage. From the deck, too. Quite like this. Right. Pikachu Zekrom might be the most powerful card ever printed by like oh, a long margin. Oh, yeah. I mean, just the damage potential of this thing. Let's put it in the cube, Andrew. Is, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you said Z Lightning needed support. Let's put the Pikachu Zekrom in the cube. Dude, Electrode EX from Fire Red Leaf Green. Or is it from Fire Red? It's not from Fire Red Leaf Green. It's, it's from, from one set. of them, though. Uh, from one of those old sets. Electrode EX just set Lightning on the map. Is that the Crash then. and Burn? The yes, one? Yeah, very that good. was good. You he blew up my good. Steelix with that. I did, yep. All right. So Jesse's got the Raikou. He's got the Zorora. He's got Tapu Koko Prism Star. Looks like he is all set and ready to go. He's going to instruct. instruct for a couple cards. And honestly, that's a good... Let loose, right? It's a good-looking three-card hand, dude. I don't want to let loose that. It's fine. He's got everything he needs. I don't know. I think you, the Malamar player... 
There's nothing, right? Just let loose him. Ah, uh, that's fair. Yeah, you could just let loose him just to. He's Nick has a huge hand. He does have a big lily hand with two Malamars in it. Yeah. Yeah, just ready to roll. So yeah, if you let loose that Malamar. Oh, he's just gonna attack. So. Okay, there he goes. I don't mind that. I mean. It's fine. Yeah, we know that. Uh, he already has the supporter in his hands for the next turn. Don't ruin that. You know what I mean? Like, that, <laughs> I feel like you got the you got the supporter in your hand. Don't don't ruin it. That's true. That's fair. You know, especially in Erica's in, against the uh, Malamar deck. He's got a small hand with an Erica's in it. He's just gonna be able to pop off and draw six cards probably next yep. turn, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. feels really good. And you know, Jesse just wants to hit a Picaram next turn. That's really all he needs to do. In here, weirdly enough, I actually don't mind the Raikou being in the active here. I think that this is probably ideal. Yeah, you don't want a GX in the active. Just nope. like peck away at them with, with the non-GX attacker. Yep. And if by some weird situation, like Nick doesn't knock out this thing, oh, it looks like Nick is definitely going to be knocking out this thing, though. Uh, and I didn't remember there being three... Oh, okay. It looks like he evolved both his Malamars and found another NK. Okay, I was going to say, I, there were not three NK down last turn. <laughs> but it looks like Nick has got the attachment from hand here. And will Cynthia. So all he needs is two Psychic Energies in the discard pile. Does he have any in there already? I feel I like no. don't feel like he does, but that's just my feeling. <laughs> uh, we haven't seen a Viridian Forest or anything like that. I... I think he probably nest balled for at least most of these Inkays and then didn't play any Mysterious Treasures for the Malamars. So I'm not sure that he actually has too many Psychic Energies in the discard pile, which could be troublesome. I he think drew he, a Viridian. He drew a Viridian, and he has a Psychic, and he has a Mysterious Treasure. So he has the cards he needs to do it. He needs to put the Viridian into play. He needs to discard the Psychic and get another Psychic, the Mysterious <laughs> that away. Do it, Nick. Do it. Oh, we yeah. the technology. <laughs> oh, yeah, Nick. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. And he has put the Wombo combo together. He discarded the Psychic Energy with Viridian to get another Psychic Energy to get himself probably another Malamar, if I had to guess. Uh, something like that, just for next turn. Get what does that. Jesse go active with if, after the Raikou is knocked out? Excellent. Excellent play from Nick here, doing everything that he needs to do with the free retreating Tapu Koko in the active position, and I gotta say that I think that Nick attacking with this Giratina has to feel pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. His board's his board is ready to go yes. to start laying down the heavy heavy hitters and knocking out Pikaram. So the only issue with Nick's board is that Tapu Lele down there. Oh right, yes. On the bench, which yeah. you have to. Just kind of cringe a little bit, knowing that you never want to play it against a Pikaram. The Pikaram can just abuse that thing. <laughs> All it's right. pretty sad. That I mean, Pikaram was literally invented to kill Lele. You the have GX, to think that. Yeah. One seventy so specific, right? Right. <laughs> We're really just hunting Lele's at that point. Right. You know, it could have been Pikaram would have still been good if. It sniped a hundred. Mm, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? It still would have been good. You would knock out other non GX. Yeah, he, would yeah. he would regularly take three prizes. But the ability to take four is just preposterous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, then he's just like plus trading. You know, I mean, like a, a GX taking five, four prizes all by himself mm -hmm. is so absurd. Right. I uh, agree. Okay, so if I'm Jesse, you're going to full blitz this turn. And you've got to Marshadow Nick. Because yeah. you know Nick has the Ultra Necrozma because he treasured for it last Already turn. Already treasured for it. And he's going to put the Coco active if you full blitz. Yeah. Yep. So I think Let Loose is what he wants if he can find it. For sure. Disrupt that hand. Nick does not have Jirachi or anything. So there's no guarantee that he'll draw off the Let Loose. And that... uh that would probably put Jesse in the most ideal situation. Looks like Jesse is going to take advantage of that Viridian Forest. That's the one of the weird parts about Viridian Forest is almost every deck that you play against, if you have it, will be able to use your own Viridian Forest. Yeah. Like they'll love to see that. A Picaram will love to see Viridian Forest. Right. A Zapdos that plays, you know, such few energy will love to see a Viridian Forest. 
Oh, oops. I accidentally turned the chat off somehow. Oh, no. Yep, it's fine. I'm going to fix that there real quick. All right. Let's put the chat back. Come back, chat. <laughs> yeah, oops. I accidentally cleared the chat from the sidebar. That's my bad. Let's try and edit the cards. Doing too much. Andrew's trying to set up too good of a production that he's been <laughs> clicking all these extra buttons. <laughs> Looks like Jesse has the Thunder Mountain Prism Star, too. So he's going to use, that's the ultimate bad manners there, if you ask me. Yeah, definitely. Use the Viridian, counter it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me have your stadium. See ya. Yep. All right, there we go, trainer. We've put you back in the chat. Thank you. Yeah, Andrew, what happened to just, you know, taking a, an iPhone and holding it up over, over a tabletop? You know? Oh, did anyone ever do that? I don't know. Wasn't the old, the old, old streams were pretty... Pretty much iPhones, huh? Pretty janky like that, right? Looks like Jesse is going to go in with the let loose here. He's got a guaranteed attack with that Pika Rom. He's also got the Absol on the bench, which could be problematic for Nick because he's not getting a guaranteed free retreat off of that Tapu Koko. So that's uh, kind of a big yikes for me. Dog. Oh, I guess it does add one to the Coco. That's pretty good. It does, yeah. Wow. So Nick would need to find an escape board to put on his Coco. Yeah, wow. Which would then balance it out. And then if he doesn't get another Malamar, then he can't power up an Ultra Crossma. For sure. I, I almost wonder, I think Jesse should just attach three energies to the ROM. The Lele's on board, you know, you just... Um, hmm. I think he's thinking about it. You think he's going to do it? No, he's got a peak ROM on the bench. Yeah, Come on, Yeah, he's going to do it to the bench. Come on. Yeah, he's got four energy switch in the deck and the Thunder Mountain. You're right, you're right, out. you're right. It's almost as, it's, yeah. It's, it would be, oh, it's a, it's a game loser. Yeah. He's <laughs> got Thunder Mountain. <laughs> I agree. It's, just, it's so alpha, right? Just as you would say. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you, you do not make the alpha play here. No. You go with the uh, much more conservative line. <laughs> okay, uh -huh. fine. Yeah, let's just not lose this game in one turn. <laughs> All right. Nick has got five cards to work with. Uh, and Jesse, full blitzing, accelerating. Not just too. It's just... Yep. It's so, like, Metal Surge is not going to be an option unless he finds another Viridian. Exactly. Uh, Nick is looking like he's really thinking through his hand here. He's... Got a nest ball at least. That doesn't help him out all too much. Uh, he can find maybe his Ultra Necrozma, which is what he may want this turn. Marshadow. Marshadow I forgot good. about Marshadow. Does he have the Necroz, um, the he's, Dawn Wings in He's in got, card? I think it, it almost doesn't matter. They're tied at one to one prize. So Nick oh, can just right. trade two, for, he trades two into three every day. So like you can attack with the Giratina's attack. And for just, sure. Yeah. So he may just go for the Marshadow GX here and decide to just trade Is that, that Marshadow. You know he gets knocked out. Yeah, that's him. Because you got to attach to the active, and yeah. you got to get three Malamars to, to set up. Now, Nick does have a Cynthia in his hand. Okay. So he's, like, going for it. I don't like Psychic Recharging before my support. Never. Never. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's cool. All right. Teach their own. All right. I mean, I guess he's not really powering up oh, anything else. Oh, switching. He's going. He has the switch in hand. Oh, so wow. actually, never mind. I take it back. He had to do it. And he's going for the energy off of this Cynthia. He's got no other route. He's got to do it. He's just going to, you know, kind of sling that choice band down. Put it on the Marshadow, sure. Put it on the Coco, I think, actually. Or the Lele, actually. I kind of like it better on the Lele. Mm -hmm. yeah, Six kinda. energy peak around. I'm just up. saying. Maybe you, know, you, maybe you get the, the juice, uh, right? Maybe, you know, <laughs> Lele gets in there, you know? That would be insane. Oh, my I, God. Like, I haven't done the math, but Lele feels better. <laughs> You're right. You uh, are correct. So let's see if we got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 200. Choice fan would make it 10 shy of a knockout with four energy on the Lele and a six energy peek around. <laughs> so it was close. I feel like it's... Okay, Either so way, if Nick does not find a way to discard... First of all, he needs an energy. He needs to bump Thunder Mountain, too. He's got an energy. Okay. Because Second of all, he, needs, four price he needs to get a Dawn Wings into the discard pile now. You're right. Yeah, yeah. To GX so that Jesse doesn't win mm -hmm. on the four prize turn. Wait, wait, but they're even on prizes, so he can't Dawn Wings. He at can't all. Dawn Wings. You're right. And and Jesse, yeah, yeah, Jesse can just he can just do the energy switch gizmos. And that's it. And that's all he needs is one energy switch 
one attachment. I mean, it won't win the two game, combo. right? Because it'll just kill the Marshadow and the Lele, and it'll take four. But I mean, I guess it's close. not technically a win, but it feels like one. <laughs> and I, he, he had to put the metal down on the Marshadow. It's one less metal for an Necrozma, Ultra Necrozma, too. All right, so you're right. Yeah, no, it's not There's a game. There's energy switch. Oh, it's my It's not a God. game winner. But we do fully expect Jesse to just get this Tag Bolt GX here. He just needs one energy switch and attachment to do it. That's it. It's only a two-card combo. That's insane. So he would be able to take four prizes, but the problem with that is if he actually does take full four prizes and knocks out the Lele, mm -hmm. he leaves a board full of Malamars, and all Nick needs to do is whip up an attack to win the game. Yes. That's yeah. it. it. It Actually, it might be safer to use the... Zara Aura to take the knockout on the Marsh Shadow. Yes. But Nick only has two prizes left. I think oh, Nick is still yeah, in a commanding yeah. position. You're right, you're right. I think you have to just go for it as Jesse at this point. Then. I think Nick just wins this game. I think so long as he can respond, he's got a big hand now. If Taking Je a three prize turn. I don't think the player can. If Jesse can get the second Marsh Shadow down, I think he's, he can actually just disrupt it enough. Yes, potentially. Taking a three prize turn really increases your hand size. Yeah. That's something we're not quite used to yet. Right. Uh, the advantage you get from taking three prizes isn't just, of course, accelerating your path to the win condition. Your accelerate, I mean, your hand size is like sometimes double. Huge, yeah, <laughs> you have to march out of someone after that. Exactly. So Nick has a lot to work with here. And we see Jesse go into his deck uh, with I don't know, some sort of search card there. I don't know. Cynthia, no? Oh, maybe Ultra Ball, and then he's going to be instructing there. He's got the energy he needs. Oh, yep. we need yeah, yeah, also I knew it. It's the like the only way to, okay. to really, I don't know, not guarantee, but just stop Nick in his tracks. Yeah. I hope, hope he breaks off this. And we see that the Let Loose Marshadow really is probably one of the best cards in the Picaron deck. Oh, yeah, it lets you dig for your combo. It lets you disrupt your opponent. It's it's amazing. It's good in Pika Round for the same reasons it was good in Placephalon. Yeah. You just take a huge knockout, shuffle to four, <laughs> and hope they don't what respond do you got? to it. Yeah, what do you got? <laughs> you, can you do it? <laughs> can you do it? And Pika, Pika Ram asks that question even more than Placephalon. Oh, 180 damage was nothing. 240 is a lot more to deal with here. All right. Jesse's got another Electro Power, another Energy Switch here off the Let Loose mm -hmm. that he doesn't really need. Yep. Someone in the chat is saying that putting down the second Mars Shadow actually just opens Nick up to be able to win this with Sky Scorching Light. Oh, which that's is a good absolutely point. true. Yeah, because now he has two bench spots. He can he has a Giratina in the discard, and now he only needs one metal and the psychic. Yeah. So Nick just needs a way. There's a metal in his hand. To find a way to get an Ultra Necrozma into the active position, but he ah, do you Lily for three? I think so. That There's feels no other way. So bad. There's absolutely no other way. Nick he... has Lily in his hand. He can't Guzma for sure. You need to Lily for three, my dude. Okay, so so the Sky Scorching Light play is fine too, right? Because you can you can. Giratina, put one psychic down. No, no, because you have to attach the metal from your hand. No, nope, yes, no way. He yeah, actually yeah. He needs has to, to hit slowly. switch yeah. or a skateboard. Oh, he man. can't actually Guzman. You can't actually attach any that you can't attach any of those energies. You need to Lily for three. I think That Marshadow is super good. Oh, here you're my going God. for okay, so Lily for four. He got the escape board and the Ultra Necrozma. He would have won if he didn't attach the energy. Oh my goodness. He would have won if he didn't attach the energy. <laughs> now, the first three cards were a skateboard and ultra. Oh my goodness. He gosh. had it if he didn't do that. Oh no. But you can't just assume that's going to happen. That's just so insane. Oh, is he going to go for the Mar? Does he have he the He doesn't Marshadow? have anybody to get. He doesn't have a. He doesn't play two Marsh. He doesn't does have he? anybody to get. <laughs> this is it, dude. He needed to not attach that energy. I know it feels bad lilying for three, but you gotta have faith. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, like, cause like, what is he gonna get? Dawn Wings GX. In that case, he could have just invasioned anyway. So attaching the active was the mistake. Attaching bit. to the active was just. It doesn't let you do anything. Oh no! Yeah. And he can't do it. 
Very and Nick nice. is just gonna scoop. God, Pico Rum is so good. That's <laughs> it. Oh my gosh, an incredible game there coming down on the wire. Nick had win <laughs> if he just didn't attach the energy. The first three cards were a skateboard and ultra. Just believe in your deck next time. You need to believe a little bit harder. I think that Nick doesn't actually open up any route for him to win the game by attaching that no, psychic. No, it's, it's impossible. He had a well, one. Well, I guess, no, no, he has to draw a rescue stretcher, right, for the Mars Shadow? Yeah. But I, I think know. that's probably what he was looking for. So I guess like he was looking for a one card combo instead of a two card combo, but he hit the two card combo. Instead, I mean Right. Yeah. A one card combo off four cards is different. That I think that he probably does have higher odds of hitting a one card combo mm -hmm. off of four than a two card combo off of three. <laughs> but he hit right. the two card combo off three and it just feels bad, man. Yep, yep. It just feels bad. Oh, my gosh. Oh, no. Sometimes you just let her rip. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Just let her rip and see what happens. I would argue, though, that I guess, like, the two-card combo was more prevalent Because there's, the com there's more combo cards. Like, there are. He, switches. Nest Ball would have done it. Right. Ultra would have done it. Switches would have done it. Escape boards would have done it. Yeah, there are yeah, a bunch yeah. of different ways to that, get that four-card combo. That was the out for sure. Exactly. So we could sit here and, you know, we could sit here and talk about it. But obviously that decision's a lot harder to make in real life when you're actually there on the table, you know? Unless you're playing Mallow, you know, yeah. you don't really get to... No. You don't always get to decide what you draw. Exactly. Time.